Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's clip, I'll do a quick overview of the brand new Mavic Air 2 drone that was announced last night by DJI. It looks like an incredibly cool drone, and it's got some compelling features that really separate it from a lot of drones on the market, so I couldn't wait to put a clip together to talk about it because I know a lot of you are out there looking for a new drone with the warmer weather coming, and you might be wondering, is this the right drone for you? Now, obviously, I don't have a Mavic Air 2 in front of me, and that's unusual because normally we're invited into the pre-release NDA group for a lot of these manufacturers where they'll send us a product well in advance of being released least, we get a chance to take it out in the field and fly it, really do a lot of in-depth testing and put together clips to explain to you guys why it's different than everything else on the market. Unfortunately, this time we weren't invited into the group, and that's okay because they rotate different people through every time. I'm just hopeful when the next product comes out that we actually get that invite. But be that as it may, there's a lot of specifications out there already. I've been pouring over the manuals and the specs online, and I wanted to do a quick clip just to compare what the new drone looks like to some other drones that DJI has in the market today. Now, the product is released as a Mavic Air 2. This is the original Mavic Air, but it really kind of has been marketed to fit somewhere between the Mavic Mini and the Mavic 2 Pro and Mavic 2 Zoom. Now in front of me, I've got the Mavic Mini, the Mavic Air, and the original Mavic Pro, which by the way, is still one of my favorite drones to fly. I think this is a phenomenal value for a drone. Now the Mavic Air 2 is actually closer in weight and size to the Mavic Pro, the original Mavic Pro, than it is to the Mavic Mini. So it doesn't fit squarely in the middle. And honestly, when you call it a Mavic Air, I'm comparing it to the Mavic Air, but it really is more like a Mavic Pro, both weight and size. So I would have almost called it, I don't know if I can call it a Mavic Pro 2, because that would be confusing with the Mavic 2 Pro. But anyway, it's a Mavic Air 2, and it fits right here. Now, the interesting thing for me right out of the gate is the fact that it looks so much like the original Mavic Pro, but it's got really advanced features compared to the Mavic Pro, and it's $200 less. So when this product came out about three and a half years ago, right around $1,000 for that drone, which was a fantastic value for everything they built in. It was the first drone that used OcuSync transmission technologies. It had phenomenal camera, phenomenal control. It could fly three plus miles. It was an outstanding drone. It was the first really commercial, or I should say consumer-based foldable drone out there in the market that did everything the manufacturer said it did. So I fell in love with this drone the minute I started flying it, and they've released a lot of other drones since then. The Mavic Air was sort of a smaller version of this before we got into the smaller drones like the Mavic Mini, and this fit the bill for a lot of people that were traveling because you could fold it up, throw it in your bag, and not have to worry about taking this big bulky drone along with you. The new Mavic Air 2, like I said, is a lot more like the Mavic Pro, but it's got advanced specifications that really make it sort of like a Mavic Pro on steroids in a lot of ways. So I think it's gonna be an incredibly popular drone for DJI, and it's $200 less than the original Mavic Pro. You can buy it for $799 or the Fly More Combo, I think for $988 or something. It's like 200 bucks more for the Fly More Combo. But let me talk about some of the specs that really make this drone interesting and differ from the competition that are on market, especially in that sort of mid-price band of drones. It's, it's kind of an interesting drone because it's a consumer-based drone that has a lot of like professional features built into it, and I'll get into those in a second. All right, so the raw specifications, size-wise and weight-wise, it's right on the cusp of what a Mavic Pro uh, presents today. So this drone and the new Mavic Air 2 are roughly the same size. The Mavic Air 2 is a little bit smaller and a little lighter, but it's fundamentally the same as a Mavic Pro, just a tiny bit smaller. Uh, as far as the flight time goes, it'll give you 34 minutes of flight time in the air, about 23 minutes here, so a big improvement over the flight time of the original Mavic Pro. It also will fly, and I can't get past this part, 10 kilometers, which is about 6.2 miles, which is insane to me that you can have a transmission distance of six miles for a drone to fly that far and still deliver an HD stream back to your controller where you can see what's going on right through the camera. So that's astounding to me. Now, again, I say this every time. In the US, we have a visual line of sight requirement where you can't really fly that far. You can fly, I don't know, a couple thousand feet if your eyes are really good, but you have to keep the drone in your line of sight when you're flying. But for me, knowing I can fly six miles with the drone means that signal is going to be so rock solid when I'm in close that I'm never going to have to worry about losing connection or losing the video stream back to the controller. So I love that they're doing that. The reason they can do that is because they're using a new version of OcuSync called OcuSync 2. Now, the Mavic Pro was the first one to use OcuSync. Before that, the Phantom products used the Lightbridge technology, which was really good, but I think a lot more expensive. When they went to OcuSync, they actually improved it from a connection topology and from a cost perspective. So it made it affordable and it also made it a lot better, I think, than the Lightbridge technology. And there's a lot of arguments out there about which of those two is better, but I like the OcuSync. But to go to OcuSync 2 means that you've got this sort of Martian technology that uses a Wi-Fi carrier signal, but it's it's frequency hopping between the 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz bands. But not only is it jumping between whichever band is better, 
but it's frequency hopping across those different bands. So it's constantly sniffing out in that spectrum what band is the strongest. And if it starts to get weak because there's interference in that particular band it's on, it already has the next band, which is the next strongest, ready to go, then it can flip to that. So it means it's it's constantly tuning in the TV for you as you're flying out there to make sure you've got the strongest signal possible. So OcuSync 2 is a big improvement. Now these guys both relied on what's called an enhanced Wi-Fi signal, which was better than standard Wi-Fi. A lot of the drones use standard Wi-Fi and it's kind of sketchy. Both of these use enhanced Wi-Fi and the the connection topology is really good between these two, but it's going to be incredibly cool on the new Mavic Air 2. And I keep pointing to this because I keep thinking of it as that frame size. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is the video recording. Now, they've upgraded the sensor. This was the first one that used a foldable drone that used the 1 over 2.3 inch sensor. The new one, the Mavic Air 2, uses a half inch sensor, which is slightly larger. Uh, it's not gigantic, it's not a 1 inch, but it's a little bit bigger than the 1.23 inch, and it, or 1 over 2.3 inch, and it gives you a lot more pixels and a lot better resolution. So it's gonna give you a clearer picture. Uh, they're saying 48 megapixel pictures and it'll record astounding video. It's 4K at 60 frames a second, which is pretty much the best you can get in the air at this point. I mean, people, I know Autel released one that does 6K and 8K, but honestly, as a regular consumer, kind of rendering 6K and 8K is a pain and most computers can't handle it. So 4K is pretty much the standard that everybody's recording in today or 1080p if they're doing sort of online stuff. So 4K at 60 frames a second means you're gonna get astoundingly good video recording on that. The other thing that's super important when you're recording 4K at 60 frames is the bit rate. So it's gonna deliver 120 megabits a second, which is an incredibly fast bit rate back from that sensor to the processing unit, which means instead of having a two lane highway where you've gotta worry about passing people, you've got an eight lane super highway where that data gets back to the processor very quickly and gives you an incredibly rich picture and a lot of detail in the back end. So it's a really big upgrade as far as the optics go. The other thing I like an awful lot about this is they're using two other technologies which are super important. Now Skydio made a big splash a little while ago and I think it's a great drone with their autonomous flying where that drone has a series of cameras around the outside and I've done clips on this on the channel. Those cameras create this 3D bubble of space around the drone where it can determine where there's an obstacle and where there's a hole and if it's chasing somebody and tracking something, it'll find the holes and avoid the solid objects. This is using the new APAS 3.0. The APAS 2.0 was phenomenal. The APAS 3.0, um, it looks to be incredible. And I can't wait to try it out. So I, I'm going to get the drone very soon. I've ordered one. It'll be here very soon. But that APAS 3.0 means that it's going to give it another level of autonomous flight if you're tracking something. So if you're riding your bike or you're in a car or you're walking, having that APAS means you can put it up in the air, let it fly and watch you and do stuff, right? And it's going to record you and not lose you out there in the space. So that's really good. Another big feature, which they didn't make a big deal out of, but I think it's a huge deal, is they built in an ADS-B in receiver, which means the drone has the ability to sense other aircraft in the area. So aircraft today are using ADS-B transmitters, which stands for Automated Dependent, I'm gonna mess this up, Surveillance Broadcast. So it's Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast, which is a mouthful, and that's the way the FAA names everything. They've gotta have an acronym, and it's gotta be impossibly hard to remember. Anyway, ADS-B, is a technology that's in most planes that are flying and they're broadcasting based on their GPS position where they are in a three-dimensional space. So anybody with a receiver can know that there's a plane over there. Even though you can't see it, you can tell where that plane is and it's a really cool technology. Well, the brand new Mavic Air 2 has an ADS-N receiver, ADS-B in receiver, which means it can listen for those planes in the sky. So it knows if it's flying that three miles away, there's a plane coming in. Now maybe 30,000 feet in the air, but it knows there's a plane coming in. So if a low flying plane has got ADS-B out and it's broadcasting that signal, it'll know for sure that there's a plane in the area and it'll warn you, it'll let you know through the application, hey Rick, you're flying, you may not know this, but there's a plane coming from this end of the beach and it's heading you know, under 100 feet, so you might wanna bring your drone down a little bit. The reason I think that's important is number one, People are gonna get this mixed up. It doesn't report your position. So it isn't some kind of sneaky thing that keeps track of where you are. It's only a receiver. You're only listening for those signals. But the reason I think that's important is because the FAA right now is on high alert about drones. You guys have seen the proposal. I've talked about it a lot on the channel. The public is worried about drones. Having a drone be safer, even a little bit safer by adding these kind of ADS B in receivers means that that drone is something that pilots can feel comfortable flying around because the person flying that drone is going to know there's a plane in the area and you can take evasive action. Now down the road they may even modify that so that if a plane gets close, maybe it gets within a quarter mile of you, the drone either does a return to home or drops down to 200 feet so it's well below where that plane is. But I think that introduction of the technology, which to my mind 
I believe is the first one built into a consumer drone, and they're calling it AirSense, which again, good for you guys at DJI that you're thinking about making the sky safer. I love that that's built into the drone, and again, they brought it in under $800. So it's not like they added it, it's a $1,400 drone, and you're paying for that feature. The fact that they built it in and got it out for less than 800 bucks, I think is a great thing. So that's a big improvement. On it. The last thing I'll talk about is the controller. Now, I haven't seen it yet, but they've changed the controller. Since the beginning of time, they've used roughly the same kind of controller for the Air, for the Spark, for the uh, Mavic Mini, for all the drones in that class, which was the standard clamshell foldable where the handles came down the bottom, antennas popped up the top. They've changed it to be more of a, I guess, a, a safer design or a more comfortable design to hold. So I'll get that and take a look at it. But it looks like a pretty cool controller and they've moved the phone from the bottom or your tablet from the bottom to the top. And again, I'll do a, in, involve clips with all of these things once we get the drone here. I'll do a close up and an unboxing and all the things you care about. I'll take it outside. We'll see how loud it is compared to other drones. We'll see how it actually flies. We'll do video imaging to show you what the video stream looks like. But I think in general, the controller looks like it's a little bit better uh, for handling. But again, we'll have to try it once it shows up. And other than that, that's pretty much it. So if you're thinking about why you might be considering the new Mavic Air 2, keep in mind things like the larger sensor. It's got a half inch sensor in it, so better pictures, 4K 60 frames a second at 120 megabits, 6.2 miles of flight distance. Again, don't fly it that far, but isn't it cool? You could fly that far. And they may lift that beyond visual line of sight requirement down the road. So that's a good thing to have. The ADS-B in receiver, I think is a home run because as the laws change and the FAA sort of gets a little bit more, I don't know, anxious about drones flying in the space, the fact that you've got a drone that's ahead of the curve on receiving that signal and knowing there are other drones in the area makes you the safest drone up in the sky. So I think that's a really big deal. Flight time at 34 minutes. That's incredible. I mean, to have a drone up in the air 34 minutes is great. Um, overall, I think the drone looks like a fantastic upgrade to their line. And the thing that blows me away the most about this, and I know it's a personal opinion of mine, but I can't believe two and a half, three and a half years ago, a thousand bucks, the new drone with advanced features, 200 bucks less. So at 800 bucks, Right now, this is a drone to own in that mid-market space. Um, and again, I haven't got my hands on it yet, so you're probably saying, Rick, how can you say that? Just based on the specifications alone and the long history I've had with DJI products where they say they're going to do something, drone shows up and it does something, that's, uh, that, that's good in my mind that it's going to do exactly what they say. So stay tuned to the channel. I promise you I'll be doing a lot more clips. I want to go into a little more depth around the ADS technology because there's a lot of questions about that on the channel, so expect a clip coming out on that. And as soon as it shows up in 10 to 15 days, maybe sooner if I'm lucky, um, I'll be doing a ton of clips on it, reviews, and if you've got questions on it, ask me those, and I'm starting to put a list together already for the top 10 or 20 questions that you've got on the brand new Mavic Air 2, so I'll do that. The last thing I'll mention is we really appreciate the support we've gotten on the channel. Our subscriber count's been going up like crazy. You will help me a lot by subscribing to the channel because the more subscribers I have, the more I look like the uh, Casey Neistats of the world or the iJustines out there, and that's kind of how DJI decides who they're going to send drones to. So if you want to see me get a drone early, help me get that sub count out, but more importantly, if you subscribe to the channel, you're going to get notifications when we do things like giveaways. And I have a lot of giveaways coming this summer where you're going to see drones like sort of drones in the market space that were given away starting in May. So I've got a couple, three, four drones that we're going to be giving away, brand new drones that we're going to send out there to you that are consumer grade and prosumer grade drones. So you definitely want to get in on those. And if you're subscribed to the channel, you'll have a shot at those drones. The last thing I'll say is I have a ton more content we're going to be posting on the channel. I've got a lot of other drone clips coming. I've got other high-tech things that we're going to be reviewing. I've been working really hard over the last couple of weeks. I haven't gotten as much flying time as I'd like because I'm doing so much testing on the bench. But if you're interested in this stuff at all, hit that subscribe button, join the Drone Valley family, and you'll be here for all those clips. And that's pretty much it for today. So thanks an awful lot for watching. I hope you found value in this clip. I'm sorry I don't have the drone, but when I have it, I'll do the clip and I'll go into more depth on it. But that's pretty much it for today. So thanks again. And until next time, happy flying. Mm -hmm.